The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going by down the road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight, and he approached the victim and poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was a neighbor to the robber's victim. He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. There was a scholar who stood up to test Jesus. But what we see here is Jesus is testing the scholar. You have answered correctly, he said. Do this and you will live. He's asking him, basically, are you a man who acts on the word? Or are you a man who just knows what the word says? Are you going to put your money where your mouth is? And so... He sees the robbers. And yet the robbers, as vicious as they have been to this person who's been assaulted, it seems that the priest and the Levite have as much guilt against them as the robbers do. In a way, even complicit in the crime by walking by. When we read the letter to the Galatians, you could see that St. Paul is implying that there are robbers and even Levites and priests among them in their midst. Bad shepherds, you could say, who are complicit with robbers in doing violence with the body of Christ in the church. There were some St. Paul says, who are disturbing you and wish to prevent the gospel of Christ. He's talking about an internal struggle. He's talking about priests and Levites who are preaching about things that are not proper and going against the faith. These are complicit with the robbers. And so... The priest and the Levites, 
they seem to be guilty like the bad shepherds. It's sort of what we see today. There is a certain amount of that. And yet, we're called to press on. We're called to be like this Samaritan. And in a sense, us non-Jews are like the Samaritans. The Samaritans were ostracized because they were not totally faithful to the Jewish traditions. We're Gentiles. We're kind of in a boat with them. And yet this Samaritan is moved. And the language that St. Luke uses to describe what the Samaritan's doing in contrast to the priest and the Levite who walked by, okay, these words that just stand out. The Samaritan was moved with the compassion. He approached the victim. In other words, he gets personally involved and connected. He gets right into the victim's business. It's personal. He pours oil and wine over his wounds. The oil and wine probably coming from his own supplies, so from his, of his own things he tends to him and he bandages him and you're thinking about and if we want to be really graphic you're thinking about oozing wounds and blood and bruises and bandaging he's getting involved he lifts him on his own animal in other words he's he's carrying him he takes him to an inn a place of refuge, and he cares for him personally. Doesn't this sound like the way that Jesus, the good shepherd, continues to reach out to us? A ministry of the Samaritan and a ministry of tending to those who fell victim in robbers with robbers that actually began in the Garden of Eden. It's since then that he's been striving to tend to this body that has fallen victim to robbers, rogue demons who tried to destroy God's kingdom. He takes out two silver coins. St. Ignatius would say that these are the coins with the inscription that's St. Ignatius of Antioch, by the way. These, these are the coins with the inscription of the Father and the Son on them. In other words, they're, they're, they're the, the commerce of heaven. They're the commerce of God directly intervening to care for his people. And St. Ignatius goes on to say that these coins are delivered by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit that has never left the church. And Jesus promises, I will return on my way back, as the Samaritan says. I will return on my way back. And so now Jesus says, go and do the same. And if you place this in context, and you consider that St. Paul was talking to Galatians who were in the midst of a of a type of scandal and schism of their own, that the, in the apostolic times also, the church was replete with robbers who are assaulting the church in persecution and in great violence, a church that, that is falling in with robbers and falling victim, victim to them, and now Jesus says, go and do the same. In other words, go and be Christ. Go and minister to this church. Don't abandon it. Minister to it in the same way I do, with compassion, approaching victims, pouring over wine, ministering the oil and the wine as we minister the sacraments. Continue doing that. Bandaging, lifting people on the altar where Jesus carries all the burdens and caring for the body of Christ. That's what we do. And so he asks all of us, 
Are you a people who are mere words, or are you a people who act on the word as the Good Samaritan? Oh,